Hey guys, I completed the CKAD exam a few days back and wanted to go over a few of the items with you. Time management is very important. You have probably already read about this and whatever folks have said is true. I appeared for the CKA exam a few months back and I thought I had more than enough time to complete the CKA exam. However, the CKAD, while I was able to complete all the questions, I did run out of time, meaning I did not have time to go back and recheck all the questions that I had flagged. You may have also heard folks say that the CKAD is easier than the CKA, but I think that's only because the passing score required for CKAD is much lower than CKA. The pace of the CKAD is much faster than CKA. To help you with CKAD, here are my tips on time management. Make sure you complete all the questions. There are 19 questions and your goal should be to get to all the questions. How can you do this? Keep an eye on the weightage of each question. If a question is only 2% or 3%, do not spend more than a couple of minutes on it. My tip is to go over the question and if you find that it's too difficult or too wordy, that is, it's too long to read, just skip it. Move on to the next question. The last thing you want to do is spend 10 minutes on a question that is worth only 2%. Even if you get it right, you score only 2% and you risk not making it to question number 19. Moving on, let's talk about a few technical aspects. There were a few commands that threw me off and I wanted to go over them with you. I had a hard time with this deployment command to set the image for a deployment object. This is taken right from the help page. All right, let's simplify this a bit. Let's break this down even further. So the command is kubectl set image deployment, the name of the deployment, the name of the container and the image name. Just remember that this is the name of the container. This item threw me off quite a bit. The next thing to remember are the rollout commands. Kubectl rollout status, deploy name of the deployment will give you the status. If you want to see the history, you specify kubectl rollout history deploy name of the deployment. And if you want to undo the earlier deployment, you do kubectl rollout undo deploy name of the deployment. Initially, I had trouble with this deployment command. I, I could not remember the syntax. When I wrote them down in this way, it started to make sense to me. CKAD is geared towards developers, so it's important to learn about these deployment commands. A number of candidates like to set up autocompletion. To set up autocompletion, you use this command. And then there are other candidates who like to set up an alias like this. If you do this, just keep in mind that the next time you use the K command, which is the alias, autocompletion will not work. To get autocompletion to work with your alias, you need to use another command and that is this one. Now, of course, you do not need to memorize any of these commands as they are documented here and you can always bookmark them. But based on your preference, you need to know which ones you have to execute. And please try these out before the exam so you are comfortable. We are at the command line. Let's go over some of the kubectl commands that I found really handy. You can use kubectl to create labels like this. In this case, I'm creating a label called foo equals bar and it adds the label right here. Now the default label that gets created is this one. Right, so it creates a default label of run nginx for a pod. If you change this to a deployment, notice how the label changes. For a deployment, the label is app nginx. You can also use the kubectl command to add environment variables. You use the minus minus env option and it creates the environment variable for you. So in this case, the name is foo, the value is bar. 
You can also pass the port argument and have it generate the YAML file. In this case, I'm specifying the port equals 80 and it adds it in the YAML file for you. Next, I went ahead and memorized some of the commonly used fields in the YAML file. Now you can always look these up during the exam or you can bookmark them. Both of these are true. But remember, the one thing you do not have during the exam is time. These steps will save you a few seconds here and there. And in the end, they will all add up. The first one I want to go over is a node name. So I'll just create a sample nginx image and I'll create a YAML file. I'll edit the YAML file. The node name goes right in the spec section. Let's do a dry run, make sure it works. It looks good. The next one is namespace. This goes in the metadata section. I like to add it right below name. And notice how namespace is completely lowercase. Let's do a dry run. That looks good too. The next one is job completions. I had a hard time with this one and I'll explain why. So this command creates a job, right? I'm using an image of BusyBox and all I'm doing is doing an echo hello world. I'll add this to a myjob.yaml file. The completion falls under the spec section. If you notice, there are two spec sections for a job. Now, if you have a cron job, you'll have three sections. So you need to make sure you know where to add this. Let's do a dry run. It looks good. Now the other fields like back of limit, active deadline seconds, parallelism, all fall in the same section. You can add some of these here. Do a dry run, looks good. The next one is resource limits, that is CPU and memory limits and requests. Okay, that's a bit too much. Let me clear the screen. Grab for requests, grab for limits. Okay, so as it says here, you can add these items for limits and for requests. So this is a sample run for the request of CPU 200M and memory is 128 MB. It generates the necessary YAML file for you. You can also add limits and it will generate the YAML file for you as well. So there you go. I mean, you don't have to bookmark or memorize any of this. It's pretty straightforward. The next one is around constraints. This one is a little tricky and I'll explain why. Let me first create a YAML file. I'll edit it. And I'll add the security related items in the spec section. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. What we can also do is move it at the pod level. So let's try that out. Okay, that's simple enough. Now let's add a constraint to it. This looks good too. Now let's move the entire block to the pod section.
and that fails. All right, so this is the gotcha here that you can't add the capabilities in the pod section. So what we need to do is this. Delete this and add it here. Okay, as you can see, that works. All right, that is all I have. All the best. Go ahead and ace the exam. Bye.